This stands as one of the globe's most expansive construction endeavors, a monumental $7.5 billion engineering marvel set to revolutionize continental travel. Unfolding on the serene German Isle of Femarn, allow me to elaborate. This monumental undertaking is known as the ScanMed Corridor, serving as the pivotal northern artery of the trans-European transport network, stretching nearly 5,000 kilometers from the sun-kissed shores of Malta to Finland's frigid expanse. Along this path, it traverses through the daunting peaks of the Alps and navigates over bodies of water. However, an intriguing anomaly emerges as one follows the northern trajectory of this route. Instead of a direct pathway to Sweden, travelers are compelled to embark on a five, double zero kilometer detour through Denmark, all due to a stretch of water nestled between Germany and Denmark, aptly termed the Femarn Belt. To elucidate further, while colossal tunnels are being excavated in Austrian mountains, epic bridges are erected between Denmark and Sweden, and massive structures interconnect Danish islands. This seemingly inconspicuous expanse of water has posed formidable challenges to the world's foremost engineers for decades until now. Currently, Travelers seeking to journey from Sweden to Central Europe must board a train at Malmo. This train embarks on the Orizond crossing to Copenhagen, where passengers transfer to another train bound for Hamburg, Germany, a journey spanning five and a half hours even on high-speed trains and notably longer for freight trains. Considering Germany as Sweden's second largest export market, this logistical hurdle assumes immense significance. Recognizing an opportunity to streamline this route, the Swedish government proposed to Denmark will assist in the construction of the Orizon Bridge if you explore the feasibility of a new fixed link across the water behind me. Thankfully, this proposition was not as far-fetched as it may seem. Denmark and the German island of Feymarn, after which the Feymarn Belt is named, lie adjacent to each other. Discussions regarding a railway between Hamburg and Copenhagen date back to the 19th century, Yet tangible progress only materialized in the 1960s with the construction of a bridge. Subsequently, this route was extended to a new ferry port at Puttgarden, enabling trains to reach the water's edge. Notably, trains were then loaded onto ferries and transported across the Feymarn Belt to Denmark, albeit at a sluggish pace due to the limitations of diesel trains and the duration of the ferry crossing. Welcome to Tour Tech Marvels, your ultimate destination for exploring the wonders of modern technology. Join us on a journey through the latest gadgets, mind-blowing innovations and fascinating tech discoveries from around the globe. Here's what they devised a 3-kilometer cable, stayed bridge soaring approximately 65 meters above the water to accommodate passing ships. You might find it reminiscent of the Orizon Bridge, albeit nearly three times longer thus began the challenges. You see, the Feymarn Belt presents unique obstacles. Spanning just under 20 kilometers, it surpasses the Orizon Bridge's crossing distance. Moreover, the Baltic Sea's depths reach 40 meters, and the soil conditions are unfavorable for construction. Consequently, the proposed bridge would require spans exceeding 700 meters, an unprecedented feat for a combined road and rail bridge. The plan entailed erecting three colossal pylons, each nearly 300 meters tall, with foundations to be laid at sea depths of up to 25 meters. Factor in adverse soil conditions and a bustling shipping lane, and it's an engineer's nightmare. Additionally, as evidence from my ferry journey, there's the matter of wind. Notably, many of the world's major bridges, like the Orizon Bridge, the Kanakala Bridge in Turkey, or the impressive Hong Kong-Macau crossing, are predominantly aligned east to west. However, a bridge spanning the Femarn Belt would need to traverse from north to south exposing travelers to prevailing west-to-east winds. After meticulous assessment of cost risks and technical complexities, the bridge was unequivocally dismissed. If crossing over proved unfeasible, the only viable option was going under. Now, how does one embark on constructing something of such magnitude? It all begins here. I'm currently standing in Rodby Haven on the Danish side of the Femarn Belt, home to one of Europe's largest construction sites overseen by the Danish state-owned company. Fimmern AS. This expansive area, two years in the making, boasts a bustling village accommodating 1,300 workers, a dedicated harbor for material deliveries, and the northern portal where the tunnel will emerge. Yet, the true star of the show is the massive factory behind me, where the tunnel segments will be manufactured. This sprawling complex, one of Denmark's largest ever built, covers an area equivalent to around 200 football pitches. 
The sheer scale of these buildings is essential to accommodate the construction of the 89 colossal concrete tunnel elements, each measuring 220 meters long and 40 meters wide capable of housing two railway tunnels, two motorway tunnels, and a service route side by side. The construction of an immersed tube tunnel beneath the ocean unfolds as follows initially. A new work harbor was constructed on the coast to facilitate material deliveries by sea. This enabled the erection of enormous tunnel factory buildings housing six production halls in total. Once operational, these factories will operate around the clock for three and a half years. Aggregates and materials will be delivered to the work harbor and transported to the factories via conveyor belts. Within these facilities, each of the 89 tunnel elements will be cast, with each element comprising nine segments. Casting one segment takes approximately 36 hours, requiring meticulous attention to detail, akin to crafting an elaborate, oversized cake ensuring the right temperature and conditions for each layer, neither too cold nor too hot, too wet nor too dry. In just 36 hours, a single segment is completed, ensuring that the concrete remains in continuous production throughout. Once a full tunnel element is assembled, it's transported to the upper basin, where massive doors enclose it. Similar to a lock system, the basin is then flooded, enabling the element to float with the assistance of ballast tanks. Tugboats then maneuver each section to the lower basin and subsequently out to sea. Upon arrival, they're positioned in the trench currently being excavated. However, the project's first hurdle arises here the trench's depth is twice the usual for immersed tube tunnels, typically resting 20 meters deep, whereas this trench plunges 40 meters. While lowering a 73,000-ton concrete segment to the ocean floor is relatively straightforward the ballast tanks are flooded, and gravity takes over positioning each segment precisely is immensely challenging. Across the entire 18-kilometer route, each segment must align within 15 millimeters of its target. Moreover, while touted as a green link to the continent, the construction of the tunnel leaves a significant carbon footprint, primarily due to concrete production. Although Femurn AS endeavors to reduce emissions through renewable energy usage and other initiatives, such large-scale endeavors unavoidably contribute to environmental concerns. Nevertheless, the project represents a balancing act between progress and preservation, grappling with the inevitable intersection of infrastructure and the natural world. While acknowledging legitimate concerns, it's crucial that project teams listen and strive to minimize impacts. Amidst controversies and uncertainties, one thing remains certain the enduring legacy of infrastructure projects. What may be contentious during construction often becomes indispensable in daily life. The new tunnel under the Feymarn belt will shape the lives of millions across the continent, its controversies overshadowed by the convenience it affords. As the sun sets on Feymarn, it marks not just the end of construction but the beginning of a new chapter in European connectivity. Thank you for joining us on this tour of Tech Marvels. If you enjoyed the journey, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content.